here today with the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs for an open Jewish community meeting on police accountability. Right now is a critical time to be talking about police accountability, uh, especially in Chicago. The U.S. Department of Justice recently released a report detailing a whole lot of structural flaws um, with the Chicago Police Department and how their contract actually really sets up the likelihood of police brutality and corruption and fraud. Between 2000 and 2015, 92 people were killed by officers in Chicago in over 400 shootings in which 170 people were injured. When they were suffering across our city, when there was a, a code of silence in the police department, along with a contract that incentivizes collusion, our entire city is wounded. The sanctity of human life and the fair and just treatment of our brothers and sisters in Chicago must be our highest priority. My older sister, Michelle Roby, was shot and killed by two Chicago police officers on February 10th of this year. The Chicago police checked on Michelle at her home many times and escorted her to the hospital twice in January alone. She always went with them peacefully, yet something was amiss on the day that she was shot and killed. Officers unfamiliar with Michelle and unfamiliar with engaging the mentally ill chose to tase her and then shoot her. This need not have happened. Something has to be done about the police violence in the city of Chicago, and we need to change the way the Chicago police engages with the people they are sworn to serve and protect. For 100 years, black and brown folks have been telling us, informing us that we have this situation, and we've ignored it. So we're fighting to, for police accountability to change a system. It's actually a system that needs to be changed. I was at a police board hearing meeting and someone asked the question. They said, well, why don't want the police officers like shoot an arm or shoot in a leg? And the superintendent said, because they're not that good. He says, because they will almost have to be an expert shot to know how to do that. So they're, they're taught to shoot at body mass, and that appalled me. That appalled me. And that's how we have to become as the city of Chicago, that when we see things happen, it just can't be about black or brown or straight or gay. It has to be about every human being in this city that we want better for them, because better for you is better for me, and better for me is better for you. We have to talk about what's happening within the police department that results in too many police officers killing too many people. The problem is a broken system. We have bad policies, we have bad training, we have bad supervision, and we have an accountability system that is fundamentally broken. One huge impediment uh, to holding police accountable for misconduct is the contracts um, that there are uh, between four different police unions and the city of Chicago. And I think we all had this sense, as many of you in the room may have, that the code of silence is just sort of an unwritten understanding among police officers that says, I've got your back. What we saw when we looked at the police union contracts was that the code of silence isn't unwritten. The code of silence is written into law, and it's written into law in the form of the police union contracts. We need to have a true community engagement process, one that is community-led, and one where the people who are really tied to the wards in the city that's impacted by this problem can now have a voice. And so something needs to change, that you can't continue to treat our people and our young people and our young boys like animals. That there's a way that you need to talk to them when you come into the community. And it needs to not become just a militarized force that is enforcing these practices has made it very difficult for people to trust the police.
And we need to restructure the way in which police officers interact with community residents. One of our many commandments tells us we should not stand idly by as a human life is in danger. It is said to be so great a mitzvah to preserve the life of another that it overrides all other mitzvah. People of color, especially Jews of color, understand all too well how bigotry and prejudice can negatively impact our lives. Whether someone is judging me for the color of my skin, the Hebrew on my neckers, or the kippot on my son's heads, are you here now because you can no longer believe incidents like Rodney King were isolated or justified? Are you here now because our news has been inundated with videos of people of color, in some cases children, being mistreated or killed by officers sworn to protect them? Are you here now because the Department of Justice confirmed what people of color have been saying all along but wasn't taken seriously? If I told you a person's house was on fire and handed you a bucket, would you first need to verify the house was indeed on fire? Would you need to know how to update the, update the owners were on their mortgage payments or their level of education or their race? Or would you rush to help knowing you could possibly save their home and the homes of others around them? It is easy to walk out of Egypt like Miriam, to walk out proud of our freedom and self-righteous about the sense that that tells us that we know what it is to be oppressed and that we cannot be oppressors. But that's just not true. It is hard to walk out of Egypt in the way that the Torah actually tells us how to do it, which is to say, you know what it is to be oppressed, and therefore everyone that is oppressed is your business. How can we take action? This is where we begin. Min Hametzar, from within the narrow place, from within the darkness, we have nowhere to go but out. So here are five commitments that we are asking from you now, this week, and in the months and years to come. You have in front of you a postcard to fill out and send to your aldermen asking them to only approve a new police union contract for the city if it addresses the issues of accountability that Adam mentioned earlier and implements recommendations from this community-based coalition. In the next few days, we ask you to call your aldermen with the same requests. This Wednesday, we will be delivering these postcards to City Hall and we ask you to join us. And finally, if you were moved and energized here today, if you aren't already a member of JCUA, we are asking you to commit to becoming a member as the core way to be a part of this work as it grows.